Hi, it's Rory from CounsellingTutor.com and in this video I'm going to be talking to my good friend and colleague Bob Cook about darkness and light in psychotherapy. When I talk about darkness and light I'm talking about working with very dark feelings, maybe behaviours with clients. And you know Bob, one of my touchstones as a humanistic therapy, <laughs> yes. therapist is the work of the philosopher Terence. Ah. And he said, I am a human, nothing human is alien to me. Say that again. I am a human, yeah. nothing human is alien to me. Ah, oh, good quote. And the idea that Terence gave us is that if someone can exhibit that behaviour and they're a human, then it resides in all of us oh. at some level. Oh. And I always say to my students, you know, use that as your touchstone. It's because someone has a behaviour, don't don't consider that behaviour as an abhorrent behaviour that is something other than the human condition. It is all part of the human condition because a human being's done it. But it does offers the challenge of when we work with clients with very dark sides to them. How do we work with them? Well, that's a good question. And what's your guiding light? Is that your guiding light for yourself? Or? This is my guiding light for myself. Oh. As, a, as a humanist, I believe that you know we're all born inherently good, yeah. and that any diversion from that is done after we're born. So, how does that influence your clinical practice, that belief system? Well, it influences me in that. First of all, I know it, so it's knowledge that's it's around. It's around. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> around you. Yeah, and therefore there's no fear. And I think that's a big part of it. If, if, if I think if I'm working with clients, that often happen now, but when I worked in general practice, mm. I worked with one or two clients, so it's a very dark kind of side to them in terms of behaviours, and that was very useful. You know, through supervision, through you know collaboration with other therapists talking that through realizing that actually you know they're human beings yeah so give me an example when you say dark side what do you mean um well I, I've, I've had clients and I'm, I'm kind of generalizing yeah for of course I hear that I've had one client who was very violent no oh, violent urges. violence urges or sometimes quite dark ideas about life itself mm about how they viewed their lives, certainly working with clients who, you know, may feel that life isn't worth living. Yeah, I, and that sort of philosophy, that value, mm. grounds you when working uh, with clients because what you're saying is that a flavour of that human condition resides in all of us. Absolutely, absolutely. So how... What's your touchstone for working with clients with a kind of... That's an interesting side? question. I, I really like that uh, quote, mm -hmm. by the way, yeah. Now, in transaction analysis, which is, of course, in my yes. former home, um, in terms of psychotherapeutic belief systems, Eric Byrne coined a, a phrase, which I like, and I think has been used probably uh, by most mm. TA therapists, and um, is you know, one of the major philosophic beliefs that Eric Byrne comes from. And it's a very simple term, but it actually um, has huge philosophical uh, premise behind it, which is, I'm okay, you're okay. Ah. Right. Now, the, the, that's an existential life position with response to life. Sure. So, Eric Byrne talked about four existential life positions. I'm okay, you're okay. I'm okay, you're not okay. I'm not okay and you're not okay. Sure. And finally, I'm not okay and you are okay. Um, and he, he called those the four existential life positions. Mm. And of course, the most healthy of those positions is I'm okay, you're okay. Mm. Absolutely. Now, we all visit different parts of those, I think, mm. different parts of those uh, positions. Um, throughout life in a way, but we have our favourite corner. And I think most transaction analysts in front of us would probably say, well, um, I try to keep to that philosophical stance of I'm okay, you're okay, mm. which is another way of looking at that quote you said. Yes. However, 
or stroke and. Um, I think most therapists struggle with that, especially in the areas of darkness, what you're talking mm. about. So I, I, I remember when I um, was working with this client who turned out to be a paedophile mm. and uh, we were talking about some of his urges and some mm. of the destructive parts of himself. Uh, uh, some of his self-flagellation, his uh, masochistic and sadistic parts of himself. Mm. Mm. And I struggled, yes. I know I did, mm. to keep him okay in that process. Mm. I mean, theoretically I understand what you're talking mm. about in a way, which is a talking about separating out, out the behaviours from the human being. Yeah, the sin from the sinner. Yeah. In the moment though, yes. that wasn't so easy for me. Sure. So I like the idea of thinking about these concepts in terms of grounding me. Mm -hmm. um, and of course the other part of this is our own histories. Yes. And uh, as you said, there's always darkness and light. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and there was always flavours of what we're talking about. And um, often the dark sides of our own history gets evoked by the dark sides which come mm -hmm. forward in the human condition mm. um, so I I will take these two things to my own therapy mm. take these things to supervision absolutely um, reflect on the process myself mm. um, and if I find it too I don't know if difficult is the right word but yeah I would say difficult or get stuck or I find I'm acting out from my character transfers I would refer on yes you know, and I, <clears throat> I think that's I think that's the the big challenge. You know, when we talk about transference, we're of course talking about reaching in to your history, mm. to my history, or to whoever's history it is, mm. and seeing things in the client that may have happened to you, or may remind you of mm. something that's happened to you, and that is a very tough boundary to work with. Certainly, with clients who've got very dark. Um, kind of sides to them um, and I think it's quite easy to, to to let fear rule in the therapy room yeah. um, and I, I'd agree with you Bob I think that if, if that comes up it's definitely one for supervision yeah. and if it's pressing and it's one of those that's around for you between the sessions then definitely one for your own personal therapy yeah. because it's probably triggered something within you that's dormant yeah, yeah. <laughs> and another reason why i like the transactionalities model is because that personality model mm. um talks about three distinct states of being mm. um, the parent the adult the child mm. uh, when the parents of our histories or our internalized parents get evoked mm -hmm. good or bad yes our unconscious history or unedited history, I quite like that phrase, our childhood estate, and when we're in the adult acting and responding to the here and now processes. Mm -hmm. So, of course, as a psychotherapist, you need to stay as much as you can executively in the adult ego state. Mm. So, once there's a slippage to either ego state, that's a signal that you're in transference. Yes. Where you're judging yeah. or you're in fear. Yeah. Well, that's right. Yeah. And once you, once you, could, if you get to be aware of that, mm. you then need to use that as a signal to uh, not only internal reflection, but as I said earlier on in the video, to take it to supervision or therapy. Yes. So I hope that's been useful um, for you, the viewers, if you're students and, and you're wondering how to work with clients when they have a real dark side and that could be could be suicidal ideation not a very popular phrase people who want, yeah. don't want to yeah. continue it's a bit clinical that who don't want to exist in the world who feel there's no value in their life and to that, that end don't want to exist um, and maybe people who have you know who have behaviors that you know are abhorrent societally abhorrent mm but we still work with them. Um, you know, if that becomes overwhelming, um, then yes, certainly the talk
touched on for me is I'm a human, nothing human is alien to me. The idea that they're just as human as as I am. But to, to consider that as humans we also fail <laughs> sometimes yeah. to be able to, yes. to put that fine theory into practice. <laughs> That's right. And you know, when we're talking about the human condition, and particularly when we talk about darkness, mm. there's um, a scale of darkness mm. from light grey, grey, mm. densely dark, mm. concretely darkness, from what you can't see. So when we're talking about, let's say, different shades of grey, mm. and we're talking about the dark sides of feelings that most clients don't want to go towards, yes. like desolation, mm. a feeling of total unworthiness, mm. uh, feeling not accounted for, mm. feeling they have no value, feeling that they um, a sense of being ignored, a sense of alienation. Mm. These are all darker sides of feelings people resist going to mm. in, in, in high magnitude. Yes. Now as a therapist, you need to be able to uh, go to those places with people. Absolutely. Now there's an interesting one here, because when we're talking about work enabling yourself to go to those places with people, that means you need to be able to have some reflection on your own darker places yes. so that you can separate out between what is their desolation and maybe your sure. own fear of some of these deeper feelings like desolation yes. in your own self. Now, now that's really important otherwise you can get caught up in a symbiosis um, a place where you're totally merged with the client and you both end up in the darkness trying to find a way out yes you can get completely lost in that client <laughs> yeah reference. yeah um, so e by definition by definition we you know we talk, we can talk about the real real dark pitch side of all of us and we can talk about things which we all know about a feeling of not being mm. valued a feeling of not being taken account of, mm. a feeling of passive of not being loved, mm. which we all know at certain levels, and we need to be able to go to those places with our clients so they can feel that somebody is with them on the journey, mm. somebody has some sense of what Cohort talked about, who was the um, originator of self, self psychology in the early 60s, um, twinship. Ah. The idea that somebody has travelled the same road, mm. and that is an extraordinarily powerful concept, mm. the idea of twinship in psychotherapy. So getting to know yourself, reflecting on yourself is really important. Now the thing we haven't talked about, which is just as important in this conversation, is lightness. Mm. Now many of the clients I see, when we're talking about joy, you know, we're talking about things like joy, joy, happiness, the ability to love yourself, compassion, mm. many of the very concepts which we're going to put in the light bracket if you like, yes. majority of my clients struggle with even seeing the lightness, yes. let alone allowing the lightness in. Yes. If you ask me one of the basic concepts of lightness that I work with with most of my clients is helping the person love themselves mm. or finding some compassion with themselves mm. absolutely absolutely the same with you absolutely i mean it, it comes up so often in therapy where where a, a client has lost the ability to love themselves they punish themselves yeah. to find that lightness of themselves yes absolutely and you know, part of the therapist's job is, is to you know, it's to show them the whole of themselves. Yeah, to find their own inner peace, mm. to find the ability to be compassionate with themselves. Mm. Because unless they find that parts of themselves, how can they show compassion and love to other people in an authentic way? Absolutely. So when we talk about darkness, we have to talk about the other side of the spectrum. And for me, just as with darkness, you know, people struggle with me every day. 
struggles past the wrong way. They face their own struggles mm. about finding their own inner lightness. So part of the job, I think, as a psychotherapist, is to enable a person to really get in touch with their light side. Absolutely. And that is just as powerful a process in, a, in perhaps the same or different way as going to their darker side. Sure. They go together. Yes. It's like, you can't have dark without light. Yin and yang, Bob. That's right. And of course we know that when we talk about compassion, love, joy, mm -hmm. they are enriched in the sun, the light. Mm. So we need to take people to the lighter side. Also, often going to the darkness or the dark places to find the light. You know, they go together, don't they? Yeah. And so, sometimes I don't want to kind of minimise what you just said, but <laughs> sometimes, you decide that way? As, a, as, a, as a therapist, sometimes I feel I'm the one with the torch and, yeah, well. and, and you know, shining it initially for both of us until we can find that glimmer of light at the end of this dark tunnel um, and the client can walk through, you know, and that's at that point when they walk through into the light, that's, that's for me, that's, that's where the therapy that's not the journey's end sometimes, where they, yeah. they go off and you know they f they find that acceptance in themselves, that self love, which right. which is, is is supporting of who they are, all of the the dark and the light. Yeah, wonderful metaphor, of torch, and of course they have to realise that you've got the torch switched on in the first place. Yes, yes, indeed, yes they have yes they have to see the beam of light. Yeah, they, yeah. I mean that's it. That's I it. mean. Uh, 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 and uh, yeah, that's a that's a job in itself, isn't it? Sure. But I I love the concept of light and art, darkness because they go together for me. You do. And uh, um, such wonderful concepts to talk about. Really. Absolutely. Well, thank thank you, Bob, for sharing mm. that with and us. You. I I've benefited from from hearing that, and I'm, I hope the people who are watching have. And um, as always, um, on these occasions, thank you for watching. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank I've you. got a final comment, though. Oh, yes. I switch off. Go on. And uh, how many therapists <laughs> does it take to change a light bulb? Bob, I don't know how many therapists it takes to change a light bulb. <laughs> <laughs> One, if they want to change. <laughs> and then the light will come on. So change and light and dark, they all go together, but thank you. And on that existential bombshell, <laughs> thank you for watching. <laughs>